Simona Dinnerstein has played some of the world's biggest stages, from London to New York. And she's released two critically acclaimed number one albums. Quite an accomplishment for a 38-year-old pianist who, not that long ago, found that the only way she'd play Carnegie Hall was to pay for it herself. I feel incredibly lucky because I really am having the career at the moment that I dreamt about having when I was a kid. It's kind of hard to, to realize it is actually happening. But it's been a highly unusual road to stardom. Her father, Simon, an artist, and mother, Renee, didn't give her lessons until she was seven. A late start by classical music standards. I remember her saying to me that when I grow up, I want to be a solo pianist, and I want to play on the New York stage. And I remember thinking, oh, my daughter is in for so much pain. Mom was right. Long hours of practicing isolated Dinnerstein from friends and often left her lonely. I very much identified myself as being a musician, and that was a very important part of my personality. I probably would have had an easier time with the other kids if I hadn't made such a point of it. But while music can isolate, it can also inspire. And at 13, Dinnerstein discovered legendary interpreter of Johann Sebastian Bach, Glenn Gould, and his recording of the Goldberg Variations. It was thought to have been written as a lullaby by Bach and first performed by German composer Johann Goldberg. I was at a friend's house and he put that recording on. I remember it just stopped me in my tracks and I couldn't believe how great it was. After attempting to play it, Dinnerstein set the piece aside. I didn't think I could play it. I mean, not only did I think I wouldn't be able to play it physically, but I just felt that I would not have anything worth saying that Glenn Gould had not already said. Dinnerstein went on to study at Juilliard, but shocked her family and friends by dropping out. Determined to find her own voice, she headed to London to study and be with her boyfriend, Jeremy Greensmith. There she became an accomplished pianist, but try as she might, never a star. Eventually, she packed it in and returned to Juilliard and Brooklyn with Jeremy, who became her husband. They started a family while she gave piano lessons and played small concerts wherever she could. You've played in retirement homes. You've played in a prison. Mm -hmm. You and didn't play your 90-minute Goldberg I didn't play the Goldberg Variations. <laughs> But Bach's Goldberg variations were never far from her mind. Feeling washed up as a musician at 30, she decided to make her own attempt to master the music she had fallen in love with as a child. What do you love about it most? It's almost not like a piece of music. I mean, it's almost like, um a meditation. You are really taken to a different place right. and, and it's actually the same feeling to play it. It took me a while to perform it well. It was a really hard piece. So Dinnerstein scraped together $15,000 from friends and family to record her performance. The first tracks soon leaked out on the internet and caused a flurry of excitement in the music world. I thought that this was just really gutsy and really cool. And David Patrick so, Stearns is the music critic at the Philadelphia Inquirer and was at the recording sessions. Her Goldbergs really take you on a journey. The most important thing is she takes you on her journey. She doesn't take you on Glenn Gould's journey. It's all hers. With the recording in hand, Dinnerstein had her own ideas about what to do next. Rather than audition for a record label, she decided to capitalize on her buzz by playing the Goldberg Variations live for critics. It was all or nothing. She rented a recital space at Carnegie Hall 
to play the concert of her life. Were you nervous? I was very nervous for that concert, and it was a really huge concert for me. It was a smash. Soon, major labels were clamoring to release her record. It came out August 28, 2007. Dinnerstein was on National Public Radio in New York that day when something yeah, incredible just, uh, happened. Our, our producers went online just before we started today, and your album is number four on the Amazon charts, not the classical charts. <laughs> so, which was crazy. I mean, it was wow. like Bruce Springsteen and then the Goldberg variations, you know? <laughs> so great. What yeah. a good day. It was a really great day. <laughs> By the end of the week, it was number one on the charts. Concert requests poured in, and by year's end, Dinnerstein's record was on numerous prestigious top ten lists. Even Oprah took notice. I kind of couldn't believe it. I, I really couldn't. I don't know how they got that disc to do what it did. I really don't. But I was glad to see that it happened. And it happened again, a year later, with a number one record of a live concert in Berlin. Now Dinnerstein's hoping that her new album, out this past week, will also top the charts. There's something about it that's a bit of a fairy tale, and so it doesn't feel quite real, in a way, that this is happening. For Simona Dinnerstein, the dream she had all those years ago has come true at last.